Well hello everybody, welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to be making some uh, scones and these are going to be uh, a flaky scone rather than the uh, traditional English scone which is more sort of cake like. And I've got this idea uh, from looking at some videos online um, of the sort of American type scone which are normally cut into triangles. Um, and I, I watched several videos, including one from Anna Olsen, where she uh, did uh, a version of these. And they look very good, and I was interested to try them. Now, the reason I'm doing them um, at this time is that I'm using raisins and sultanas in mine, but these are ideal, uh, the ideal type of thing to do with... Uh, whatever you have in your cupboard. If you've got some glacé cherries, you can chop them up. If you've got some nuts or some chocolate chips or whatever you have, even something savoury, some seeds or some uh, herbs and things like that would work quite well. Now, it's quite a simple recipe and it doesn't take too long to do either. And the other advantage for me is that I'm going to make this batch, but I'm going to freeze some of the dough. I'm going to cut cut the shapes out and freeze some so that I can bake them later because uh, in our current climate where you can't readily share food I don't need the number of scones that I could make today uh, they would not be good uh, by the time I got through eating them all so uh, to start off with I have uh, one baking tray if you were going to make the full batch you would need at least two but one baking tray lined with parchment paper and I have my oven preheating at 190 Celsius, 170 Celsius with a fan, 350 Fahrenheit. So for the ingredients, I have uh, 450 grams of plain flour. Now, uh, I measured this out with a, a 250 milliliter cup measure. Cup measures seem to come in different sizes, 240, 250, I've even seen 235. But with a 250 uh, milliliter cup measure, and I've scooped the flour out, that comes to three cups. I also have 50 grams, which is a quarter of a cup of caster sugar, you could use granulated. I have the zest from one orange, I have four teaspoons of baking powder, one medium egg, which would be large in the USA, and the yolk from another medium egg, again large in the USA, and I'm going to use the white of that egg uh, to brush the top. I also have half a teaspoon of salt, and I have uh, 100 grams, which works out at two-thirds of a cup, of uh, raisins and sultanas. Now uh, you can use, as I say, whatever you want. My raisins are on the top, the sultanas are on the bottom. And then the other ingredients are in the fridge and that is 175 millilitres, which is three quarters of a cup minus one teaspoon of milk. and. 175 grams of butter which I've cut into cubes. So the first thing we're going to do is to oh I should say the 175 grams of butter works out at about three quarters of a cup. First thing to do is to put the baking powder and the salt and the sugar and the zest into the flour and I'm going to mix that around just to get those combined. Now you could use lemon zest if you wanted to, you don't have to use any zest at all, it's entirely up to you. This is the sort of thing that you can mix and match basically. So whatever you have in your cupboard or your fridge or whatever, you can put in. So having mixed that together, the next thing I need to do 
is to cut the butter into that. Now you can do this by rubbing it between your fingers until you have um, some chunky lumps left, but uh, it's incorporated quite nicely. Um, I'm going to use a pastry cutter and I want to have some chunks of butter left. I don't want it all to be like fine breadcrumbs. So that's, I'm going to use my pastry cutter like that, but I'll just show you if you were going to do it by hand without the pastry cutter. You can cut it between two knives if you want, but you can also just pick it up and rub it between your fingers until it's reduced in size. And so I have that cut in and as you can see there are still lumps of butter um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to press it between my hands. The idea is to flatten those lumps of butter out. I probably should have got a larger bowl for this but it, it will be fine. And with that rubbed in quite nicely um, I'm actually now going to add the egg and the milk and I'm trying to get the butter into sort of flakes if I can because as that butter heats up it releases steam which will cause the flakes in the scone mixture. So I think that's good enough. So now I'm going to just put my eggs into the milk and give them a stir around. And then I'm going to put that into the flour and I'm going to use my fork just to stir that around until it starts to come together but it won't be fully incorporated but I want the um, the moisture to have been um, combined in so that there's no puddles. And that looks quite good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip that out onto the work surface and then we'll pull that together. Now for that I'll need some extra flour probably on the work surface. So I'll just put some flour out. Like that. And I'll tip this out. As you can see it's not all incorporated, we're going to do that now. Thank you. 
and with that mixture tipped out we're just going to use the hands to pull it together now you can actually just turn it over like that with a a bench scraper and if you turn it over like that it should help with the layering I think and that's actually quite good so what I'm going to do is to flatten that out and I'm going to put about half of my dried fruit on the top and turn that over like that and flatten it out again and we don't want to uh, knead this and make the, the dough too tough obviously and with that flat again I'm going to put the rest of my fruit on and these are slightly larger because these are some of the sultanas and again I'm going to fold that over like that and then I'm going to fold it one more time and then we'll cut out our scones So I'm going to push that down, I'm just going to flour the work surface. And flour the top. I'm going to push that down like that. I'm going to cut it into two. And this first half is the half that I'm going to bake now. So I want to get that to about three quarters of an inch in depth. And once I've got that to about that depth, I'm going to cut out some rounds. Now, um, I'm using a cutter which is slightly under two inches but you can use whatever size cutter you want really and then I'll take that and put it onto my baking tray and with the excess dough I'm just going to pull that together without working it too much flatten it out and cut out more and with the other half of the dough I'm going to form that into a round like that and I'm going to flatten that out as well and then I'm simply going to cut that into eight triangles
like that. And I'm going to put those uh, into a container and I'm going to freeze them so I can then bake them in a few days time. So these are my small scones. You can make them whatever size you want as I say but I've got nine small ones there and I'm just going to give that egg white a little bit of a beat and then with a brush I'm going to brush the top of each one trying not to go down the side because that can inhibit the rise. So those have been egg washed. I'm going to put them into the oven and I'm going to bake them for between 15 and 18 minutes until they've risen and got a nice golden brown on the top. Then I'll take them out and uh, let them cool down. Then I'll come back and show you the results. I baked um, my scones for 18 minutes and I took them out of the oven and let them cool down. Some of them went a little bit lopsided but that happens if you try to press down with your cutter if you're using a cutter uh, in a single clean motion um, then they tend to stay more upright I think. So this is what mine look like and I've cut one and I've just spread it with some butter and some homemade passion fruit jam. I'd like to have used clotted cream but I don't have any. Uh, so they look quite good and I'll have a taste of this one. So lovely and soft and I tasted them by themselves uh, earlier and I could just get that hint of the, the lemon zest and then you've got the, the raisins and the sultanas or whatever you want to put in and then um, it's the, uh, the butter and the jam actually make these things or clotted cream if you, if you can get it. Um, so it, this is a simple recipe, it can be done from start to finish within an hour and as I have said, you can actually um, bake all of them if you have enough people to eat them or you can bake as many as you want and freeze the rest and bake them uh, one, two, three, four at a time as you wish. So I hope you've enjoyed this recipe and if you have, please give me the thumbs up below the video and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen, there will be an eye that you can click on, which will take you to a link for this recipe and I'll put a link below the video as well. And I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.